you understand what we mean by this? All right. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. One more question. That if if that is the situation, and normally it is for universities, that place is for universities only. Then how can I get that place? Agree. Uh, if, if it was zoned and it cannot be possible to turn it into residential or commercial property, you value it as a university. But the concept is highest and best use. That is possible. If it's not possible, don't value it on that basis. Use the value of the university. Highly you unlikely. You understand? <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. Okay. All righty then. You can you, you can close. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Yusuf, for a very informative presentation. You presented it very captivatingly. Uh, now I'd like re to request our session chairman, Mr. Asad Ali Shah, uh, past president, Institute of Chartered Account Accountants of Pakistan, uh, president uh, at the 12th session of UNCTAD, and various other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's not, not to be said. So please, Mr. Asad Ali Shah. Thank you very much. Um, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I think if I say that uh, this is um, one of the best sessions that uh, I have attended on IFRS, and I I think a lot of you know that I have attended a lot of them, it will not be wrong. So I think a big <laughs> round of applause for Yusuf. Undoubtedly, I think a very, very comprehensive update of not only the IFRSs which were announced in the newspaper, in the circular, but I think way beyond going into a very comprehensive update. Uh, so uh, I, I think, and, and also the way he has um, summarized the key points, because that seemed to be a great challenge. I asked him. Initially, you know, it was announced that he was going to cover IFRS 9, 10, 11, 12, um, and 13. He actually added a broad introduction to the IFRSs, uh, the exposure draft on leases, classification of debt, covered very comprehensively and very, very critical issues which we come across every day, uh, you know. Uh, it was, it's amazing really how you've covered it uh, and uh, I, I think very, very, very apt and excellent use of time uh, and I'm sure we've all benefited uh, from uh, Yusuf's uh, presentation and these, uh, these uh, presentations will be very useful. So um, I think I'm not going to waste more of your time. Uh, all. A few things that I had to say, I think, um, have already been said. Just a few remarks that uh, in Pakistan, the issues that we see, some of the practical issues, I think some of them you were, we already discussed during the classification of debt, for instance, is an everyday issue that we come across. We have some peculiar situations and reality has also got to be considered. Uh, while technical aspect and the way the standard is written, I think we need to understand and appreciate that the standard is written, you know, I don't know what is the situation of the ISB now, but uh, 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 the last time I saw, there was hardly any uh, member of, in the board from this part of the world or at least uh, other than Agora, I would say. So all of uh, all the uh, uh, they were they were desperately looking for somebody. Uh, I don't know whether they got an Indian or somebody. This uh, totally uh, you know Western world as far as IFRS is concerned. So they have that mindset. You know the standards are written largely from the perspective I think uh, of the environment uh, in the West. Um, we have a situation when we do the audit of banks or when we do the audit of uh, textile companies, for instance. The going concern issue, for instance. We know that in Pakistan, if your liabilities are more than the assets, 
in, in a Western country, in a developed world, they can enforce the collateral, they can take you to liquidation and the company will be liquidated within months. Here, the company never gets liquidated. Tell me a single company which was forced into liquidation. How many of we have seen that? So you see, we are living in a different world and the realities are different. So sometimes, you know, I mean, we, we are, uh, there is an inherent contradiction also now. I think you covered this also that what is happening broadly on a worldwide basis in the IFRS world is, uh, apart from the huge agenda that you talked about, there is this process of convergence going on. Convergence means convergence between the IFRS and the US GAAP. You know, the two standard setters are working and globally, the, in the global financial crisis also, G20, this was one of the issues that ultimately the world, you know, the ambition is that there should be one standard setter ultimately and ideally, you know, and as Yusuf said, US GAAP is rule based, 20,000 pages or 25,000 pages, IFRS principles based, yet it is moving towards rules. So what's happening is, when Enron happened, in the US, there was a lot of criticism that US GAAP is rule-based, it's not principle-based. And because it's rule-based, you just see whether it is according to the rules, you don't apply your mind, you don't look at the principles. Okay? So that's why things like WorldCom and Enron happened. This was one of the criticism, and of course, there was this issue of SPEs um, and the consolidation aspect that you also discussed. So on the one hand, that's rule-based and it is being criticized. On the other hand, IFRS are principles-based. So, but it's because it's principles-based, there is a lot of room for judgment and taking your own interpretation. So that's why they are moving towards rule-based. Now, what's the right answer is really a, a big, big problem. But when we say that IFRS are rule ba uh, principles-based and the objective is true and fair view. And they also provide you, in fact, IFRS 1, uh, IS 1 also uh, allows you this uh, true and fair view exception principle. That you can come across a situation where the compliance with the standards will not give you true and fair view, so you can depart in that situation by giving very comprehensive disclosure. So, I mean, so those are also things that are, uh, you know, that need to be sometimes, uh, I mean, considered that, um, uh, uh, you know, what is the, ultimately what I'm trying to say is that we have to look at the financial reality when evaluating things and also keep in mind that IFRS are principles based and not just get into the rule, although our technical friends get into the too much of the rules that no, there is absolutely no discretion. This is what is written. You can't go here or there. We have to consider that what are the principles and whether or not it is giving true and fair view. Uh, from the practical Pakistan perspective, I think uh, these standards, um, consolidation is one standard that is going to hopefully change things. Although I think uh, in if you look at the principle again, basically the uh, IS-27 also had the same principles of control, in my view. Like for instance in the case of asset management companies and funds, some of our friends, I mean I, I al always had this principle, they, sh they should have been consolidated because there was a control. But there was a difference of opinion and people used to get away. So they've tried to actually uh, remove that gap and uh, uh, you know although in my view even the earlier IS-27 uh, the, uh, the asset management companies and management companies should have consolidated it but now they I think it will be difficult for them to get away from it uh, so we will um, hopefully see more more consolidations uh, as a result of uh, uh, the, the IFRS 10 
IFRS 9 and the issue of IS 39, I think, will remain controversial. Uh, 